Hello. This is going to be a video of quotes that I like. I won't subject you to any of my loose thoughts today. So, this first one is going to be, first couple is going to be from Rosemary Waldrop from the collection of prose poems called Curves to the Apple, which is a collection of three of her uh, books. The one I'm going to be reading stuff from is Reluctant Gravities. Uh, which is my favorite one in this. And this is from conversation number five called On Eden. Even a bold garden, he says, is already wistful. Like the bisons of the cave paintings, the phallic African gods, the frescoes found in Pompeii. As if we could step into an image of what we have lost. Tight fit of pine and apple trees and turf studded with a fine fickleness of morning glories. We're not eagles soaring above, leaving every leaf as it is, but at least we don't fear flying with the sparrows and multitudes of insects. The explicit sun, or maybe inherent wear, occults our act, and we fall back into the old tale. And then the next one is uh, also a conversation uh, conversation 9, called On Varieties of Oblivion. And I may have read this on here before because it's completely amazing. And this is what I thought of. I always think of this line. I always think of this first line here. We talk because we can forget, she says. I'm sorry, I will, I will subject you to something, but... Um, I think that line is so perfect and one thing I like about it is there was this Russian guy from the early 20th century he was a journalist but he was known for his perfect memory he had uh, complete control of like his autobiographical memory and he did um, memory competitions and stuff but um, he was like called the mnemonic, the pneumonist, however you say it. But he was like a subject of psychological studies and everything. Um, but there was this quote by him that he, when he was going to get ice cream, it was some, you know, generic vanilla ice cream, but he said the way the lady said it came out of her mouth like coal like he, he imagined coal coming out of her mouth and um, I watched a documentary on these people who have very good autobiographical memories and they they always write they always write things down so they can forget them so they can you know let go of them but it's kind of like a more trivial and scientific thing I, I like this poem better we talk because we can forget, she says. Our bodies open to the dark and sand runs out. Oblivion takes it all with equal tenderness, as the sea does, as the past. Already it suffuses the present with more inclusive tonalities, not orchestrating a melodic sequence, but rounding the memory of a rooster on top a hanging silence, or injured flesh, impersonal. Only an animal could be so. And then to connect to that, um, as I was walking from school back to my apartment, I had the sensation, I was asking myself, because, you know, I'm walking past all these, you know, beautiful young people, they're all healthy, you know, they're all talking to their friends, laughing, you know, listening to music. I'm like, I think, I thought to myself, you know, do, do they realize this moment is going to be gone forever? This, this perfect moment that, uh, you know, at a college. And I thought of um, Proust in the very last page of Swan's Way in the chapter called um, Place Names, The Name. Um, it's one of my favorite sections in uh, almost anything. It 
The reality that I had known no longer existed. It sufficed that Madame Swan did not appear in the same attire and at the same moment for the whole avenue to be altered. The places we have known do not belong only to the world of space on which we map them for our own convenience. None of them was ever more than a thin slice held between the contiguous impressions that composed our life at the time. The memory of a particular image is but regret for a particular moment, and houses, roads, avenues are as fugitive, alas, as the years. And, um, one interesting phrase I ran across recently was nostalgia for a lost future. And then the, the last bit I'm going to read is from this uh, book I recently came across, A Book of Memories by Peter Nadas. It's from the very beginning. Certainly I don't want to write a travel journal. I can describe only what is mine. Let's say the story of my loves, but maybe not even that, since I don't think I could ever begin to talk about the larger significance of mere personal experiences, and since I don't believe, or more precisely don't know, whether there is anything more significant than these otherwise trivial and uninteresting personal experiences, I assume there can't be, I'm ready to compromise. Let this writing be a kind of recollection, or reminder, something bound up with the pain and pleasure of reminiscence, something one is supposed to write in old age, a foretaste of what I may feel forty years from now, if I live to be seventy-three and can still reminisce. Isn't this a good cover? Seems to fit the title and book perfectly. It's pretty interesting too, this preface he puts in it. It is my pleasant duty to state that what I have written is not my own memoirs. I have written a novel, the recollections of several people separated by time, somewhat in the manner of Plutarch's parallel lives. The memoirists might conceivably all be me, though none of them is. So the locations, names, events, and situations in my story aren't real, but rather products of a novelist's imagination. Should anyone recognize someone, or, God forbid, should any event, name, or situation match actual ones, that can only be a fatal coincidence. And in this respect, if in no other, I am compelled to disclaim responsibility. Well, I hope you enjoyed those quotes. Enjoy your day or night. Death is a gang boss.